Happy New Year, everybody. And you know what the new year means. That's right. New horror comics. Here's what's new in comic book horror this week, January 4th, 2023. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out this week in comic book horror, January 4th, 2023. Horror Comics number 18 is from Antarctic Press. The story is by Marcello Bondi with art by David Hutchison. This looks to be the last issue of Horror Comics. It's been a rough ride for this series as the distribution has been scattershot and all over the place. Sometimes two issues have been released on the same week, then other times it's been delayed for months. Here's hoping the last issue delivers scares, as much of this series has in fact done that, and gives the creators a chance to get back on track. Purgatory Must Die, number one, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Ray Fox, with art by Alvaro Sareseca. Sareseca. Purgatory is one of those gals who just can't stay out of trouble. It might be the red skin and horns on her head that makes her act like a little demon, because she is a little demon, with a propensity for eating gods. Would you put it against the gods for wanting her dead? She'd better watch it, or those splashed all over those covers are going to be in deep trouble, especially when Evil Ernie, Vampirella, and the Secret Six are involved as they guest star in this first issue. Nita Hawes Nightmare Blog number 11 is from Image Comics. The story is by Rodney Barnes with art by Zyman Kudransky. The next subject in Nita's blog is Jackie the Ripper, a modern incarnation of the original serial killer. But all of this attention Nita has been putting on the Ripper has alerted her and put Nita in Jackie's sights. I love that cover, which seems to be an homage to the opening of Jason Lives. If not, that's one hell of a coincidence. Deathgasm, number one, is from Opus Comics. The story is by Jason Howden and Peter Boone, with art by Industrious La Monicana. Wow, what a name. From the filmmaker who made the cult classic movie Deathgasm, the band who resurrected demons when they first came together have gone their separate ways. But now they decided to get the band back together for a music festival harboring an otherworldly menace. If you're a fan of the heavy metal horror film, you've got to put this book on your pull list. It looks freaking awesome. Love that cover. Vampirella vs. Red Sonia number 3 is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Dan Abnett with art by Alessandro Rinaldi. Hell has spilled over on Earth. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. This puts Vampirella, who kind of digs that kind of shit, in direct conflict with Red Sonia, who doesn't really dig it that much. Expect demons, eternal night, bloodbaths, and of course, boobs, featured prominently on every variant cover. Stillwater, number 17, is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by Chip Sidarsky, with art by Mike Spicer. With the secret of the eternal life of the residents of Stillwater revealed, the town is in total disarray, and the townsfolk are at war with one another. This seems to be the final arc of Chip Zdarsky's hit horror dramatic series. And if you've followed that series so far, I'm sure you'll be getting this one. Rick and Morty vs. Cthulhu, number two, is from Oni Press. The story is by Jim Zub, with art by Crank and Leonardo Ito. I'll read anything Jim Zub writes. He's one of the few writers who rarely lets me down with delivering an exciting and character-driven story. The thing is, I must admit, I've never really gotten into Rick and Morty. I just didn't get in on the ground floor of this animated series and haven't found the time to catch up with it. That said, if you're a Rick and Morty fan, this series pits the duo against the most benevolent beast in Lovecraft's Cabinet of Horrors, Cthulhu. 
I guarantee, with Zub writing, it'll be good. The approach number three is from Boom Studios. The story is by Jason A. Hurley and Jeremy Hahn, with art by Jesus Hervas. I like the body horror creatures and simple yet high-stakes premise of a monster descending from the air into a remote, snowed-in airport in the middle of nowhere. The art by Jesus Hervas makes the monsters mysterious and horrifying. You can't really tell what's up or down on these slimy, hairy, bulbous creatures. I can't wait to catch up on this series, and yes, it could make for a very cool horror movie, but I still appreciate it in comic book form. The Walking Dead Deluxe number 54 is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by Robert Kirkman, with art by Charlie Adlard. The fighting prowess of Abe, Rosita, and Eugene are tested to its limits as they seek to prove themselves as true survivors to Rick and his crew. Check out all of the zombie carnage, this time represented in full bloody color. Children of the Black Sun number one is from Ablaze. The story is by Dario Siccio, with art by Letiza Cadonici. This one's got a very cool premise. Years ago, the sun went black. All the children born that year turned out to be abnormally sized, with white hair, ashy skin, and red eyes. These children have been ostracized in their community, and when the black sun rises again years later, new horrors arise with it. Yes, it sounds an awful lot like Children of the Damned, but the artist of House of Slaughter, Letizia Cadonici, and writer Dario Siccio are talented folks. I'm sure this will be vastly different from that old movie. It's got to be better than Carpenter's version of it. I'm totally intrigued by this premise of a superstitious town turning on their own. Really looking forward to this one. Finally, we have Spawn, number 337, from Image Comics. The story is by Rory McConaville, with art by Carlo Barberi. I find the Spawn phenomenon really interesting. It reminds me a bit of Ghost Rider. He's a character that looks cool, but try as many writers might, that's about as deep as it goes. Like Ghost Rider, it's basically about a deal with the devil, accompanied by a lot of spikes and chains. It perplexes me how the look of Spawn hasn't really changed in all of these years. Still, while I don't count myself as one of them, Spawn has its diehard fans, and the series is in its 337th issue, so I guess McFarlane is doing something right. In this issue, Spawn attempts to take over an especially untamable spot of land in hell. Maybe one of these days I'll be tempted to check this series out again, but I don't think this issue is it. That's it for this week's haul. I'll be picking up a few of these titles this week, including Children of the Sun, The Approach, Deathgasm, and Horror Comics, if I can get it. How about you? Let me know what horror comics look good to you, down in the comments. Yeah.